This USA made knife review video is brought to you by Knives Ship Free, the best place to buy knives, period. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the afternoon of 26 December 2022, the day after Christmas. I am fat with ham and scalloped potatoes and all the other trimmings of a Christmas dinner last night. Did put in a full day at the sharpening bench today. And as our intro said, we're coming to you today with a USA made knife review. But before we get into it, let's do a pocket dump and a wrist check, shall we? First up, clip to the top of the left front pocket. The venerable Benchmade 940BK-2004, perhaps in my estimation, the best EDC modern folder ever devised by mankind. Mm -hmm. And riding in the bottom of the left front pocket today from Great Eastern Cutlery's Tidu line, it is the number 78 American Jack. Oh, parts knife from the rendezvous, rendezvous of what, 2019, I think, I picked this up. Mm -hmm. Oh. A parts knife from components made in 2014. What? You betcha with the clip point main, the big usable pen secondary, the man's pull of about an eight and a half. Mm. Probably my favorite EDC traditional slip joint pocket knife. And then on the wrist today from Seiko, a Japanese domestic market offering. It is uh, the old pair of Levi's, the Sarb 033. Mm, 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 mm. Can't buy a watch that pretty for twice the price, I don't think. Okay, so what's up today? Well, it's a Benchmade knife. This one actually not courtesy of Knife Ship Free. This one was purchased in last Thursday night's knife sale and the buyer was kind enough to give me a few days to review it before I sent it out. This knife is available at Knife Ship Free. It is the 430 BK Redoubt from Benchmade. I will include an affiliate link in the description of this video to the Redoubt page at KnivesShipFree.com. You'll see two versions of this model, this one and then the Combo Edge, which is the SBK. If you navigate over to KnivesShipFree using the affiliate link, it does help my channel just a bit, so I would appreciate it if you do that. Mm -hmm. It is a black class knife, as you can see by the box, and here is the knife. Mm-hmm. A lot of people view this as the sort of heir apparent to the Griptilian. It is very similar in handle configuration, both in shape and in materials used, but it's quite a bit different actually. Let's get into it. We mentioned that it is a black class knife indicating kind of soldier blade or tactical knife. I don't know, if it's, I think for me it's more of a large EDC blade. It comes with a stunning drop point blade with a cut swedge that makes it almost emulate a clip point. And then a very high saber grind, fairly broad blade. It is finished in uh, a coating that is new to me from Benchmade. They call it cobalt black. It looks a lot like a Cerakote. Well, let's kind of compare it to a, a dead black Cerakote. A little difference in texture and hue, but it appears like it's going to be pretty durable. As you can tell by the markings on the blade, this is a first production run knife of the readout. Blade length is going to be about 3 and 9 16 inches, and it is crafted of a blade steel we haven't seen much of for several years, CPM D2. It's not a new steel. 
uh, Crucible made this, gosh, I'm thinking 10, 15 years ago, and it fell flat. People, you know, read D2, and they thought D2, and, you know, among, among knife snobs, D2 isn't super highly regarded, but when using crucible particle metallurgy technology, the one knock against D2 disappears and becomes something wonderful. A lot of people, including my dear friend Mike Stewart at Bark River Knives, think D2 in its normal smelted form has too coarse a grain structure to be a good knife steel. I disagree, but that's what a lot of people think. Uh, let's see, I think Mike coined this phrase regarding D2. It takes a horrible edge and holds on to it forever <laughs> because of its coarse grain structure, but it becomes something entirely different in CPM form. In fact, it's so good in CPM form that Carpenter ripped it off several years ago, at least something very close to it, and called it CTS XHP, and you guys love that steel. Now, it is slightly different chemically. Uh, XHP does have a bit more chromium, a bit less vanadium, and it adds a little nickel. Other than that, they're basically analogs of each other. I tend to prefer CPM better than CTS as a process, but anyway. So you got a super solid knife steel here. I mean a super solid knife steel. Handle on the readout is four and three quarters inches in length. It is constructed of a grivery, and I think if we can peer into the blade well, you'll see the molded pattern of lattice <clears throat> to keep the mass down on the handle and can keep the strength up. I think you can see in there enough to see the partial liners which end right behind that assembly screw. So they come back just about that far. And rather interesting construction. The blue-gray grivery that you're looking at is two pieces. I think that reveals itself most evidently here back at the end of the knife. And then this sort of uh, ranger green frag pattern textured hunk of grivery is one piece that wraps the spine of the handle, which I guess will give it a little bit better structural integrity. Just one, well, two body screws essentially. The front one with the stop pin and then the back one, which not only holds the knife together, it also holds the clip in place. And you can see it's like a female pivot and then a screw if you look down through the hole in the clip. So super solid construction. This screw and the like screw on the other side just anchor the liners to the handle. The clip on the readout is a new one from Benchmade. It's a Parkerized Deep Carry Affair, ambidextrous, left or right hand tip up. But instead of using two or three screws, it just uses that body screw and it slips into slots in the end of the handle and you can see how it would be ambidextrous depending on which side you put it on. It's kind of short in comparison to other Benchmade clips. There is a split arrow and here is a Parkerized Emerson. Mm -hmm. So all in all a pretty economical package. Blade stock is just under an eighth of an inch, about 122 thousandths. The handle, chunky like a grip. Here is my uh, knife ship free Ritter grip. But a little over 5 eighths of an inch, 630 thousandths in handle thickness. The handle shape, uh, it looks a lot like a Kephart, doesn't it? I think it kind of does, especially the, the rear section of the handle a deep finger choil in the handle and because of the large dimensions in this area it does kind of let you slip forward you might nick yourself with the heel of the edge but I think you could do that especially if it's just for fine work mm -hmm. weight on this knife and kind of a larger knife under four ounces 3.7 ounces 
and I think we can attribute that to the handle material. It is a good old axis lock mechanism, kind of normal sized axis lock hardware, not, not a Damas like in size, but still plenty robust for the kind of a knife that it is. It is of course deployed with thumb studs and it rides on phosphor bronze washers. This one pretty much brand new. Not quite a drop closed knife as currently adjusted, but still eminently flingable. The lockup is rock solid as you would expect. And the blade centering on this one is about perfect. <clears throat> Let's kind of talk about blade geometry, which I really like. I like it better than the standard drop point griptilian blade. The saber ground very high. Then just a little sliver of flat before that beautiful swedge. Uh, the, the high saber grind and the under 1 8 inch stock thickness make it capable of being very slicey. And then when you measure the angle of the primary bevel, the primary blade grind, it's about 8.4 degrees inclusive. So for comparison, a paramilitary 2 is about 5.6 but a much broader blade and a 940 those usually are between nine and a half and ten degrees inclusive so a little more slicey geometry than a 940 definitely more slicey than a standard griptilian blade so I'm liking that I really dig the blade shape and the coating is quite attractive the good old standard benchmade thumb studs which are removable for sharpening if you need to go back together easily. Let's talk about handle features. You've got, if I hold it right handed as the clip is oriented, my back three fingers rest beautifully on that frag pattern checkering and it's nice and sharp, very tactile. The jimping, which is standard Benchmade Fair, uh, is cut into the liners and it's plenty sharp enough. You don't have that adjacent jimping on the grivery handle like you do on a griptilian, but I never felt like it added much. So really, really secure in hand. If you do come forward, you can kind of index on the spine. You kind of feel the beginning of the swedge for an index point, so it's kind of nice. Let's look at the other grips. In the overhand pinch, it's absolute money. In a reverse grip, again, super comfortable. The clip protrudes a little bit from the end of the handle, but it really doesn't create a hot spot. In the draw cut grip, really nice, no hot spots at all. Very squared away. I guess if I were gonna, if I were gonna give it one ding, it is quite a distance from where your index finger would be in a saber grip in the beginning of the cutting edge, but again, it does afford that versatility of a forward finger position. I know what you guys are going to say if you've been listening. It sounds very Norrell GTX griptilian-y. A little bit, a little bit Fisher Price. Uh, frankly, not as bad though. It's a little more damped, a little more of a thud than that hollow snap clack noise that a griptilian makes. So I kind of like it a little better. I don't know if the if the handle construction or maybe the pattern of the lattice work inside dampen that noise a little bit, but it doesn't sound as plasticky as a 550 or a 551 griptilian. Let's do, I don't have a standard grip, but I do have my knife ship free scale Ritter grip. Let's kind of do a little size comparison. The blade's about an eighth of an inch longer on the readout. Let's see if I can line these up so you can see them. All right? And let's kind of look at the handles too. So a little bit longer in 
little bit longer in blade length and handle length, but just barely in handle length. So pretty economical. When they're closed in your pocket, a little slimmer in that dimension than the Ritter grip is. I'm sure the, the standard grip Tillion doesn't have this big hump. It might be a little closer, but this is your highest point, sort of your thickest point top to bottom when the knife is closed so the blade doesn't add anything to that dimension so it's pretty friendly in the pocket now this uh, checkering this frag pattern is pretty sharp however I don't find it to be a pocket ripper like uh, like the old style cold steel G10 by any means I do find that because there's no hardware area or bare handle area north of the top of the clip it almost works best when you're taking it out of the pocket to just go ahead and hook the end of the clip which isn't really a problem uh, given the fact that it is a short-ish clip so it's not not bad not a bad move at all just to run your thumb down inside the knife and hook the clip with your index finger coming out pretty slick what do you guys think of this color combination? It's kind of a slate blue or a blue gray with that ranger green or almost a forest green. I think it looks kind of good. It should uh, it should coordinate with a variety of wardrobe choices. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, the elephant in the room, shall we? We've got a new model from Benchmade, so new tooling, new process, investments were made. <clears throat> and I think these were released early in 2022 uh, in, the, in the age of inflation. So what does that translate to? Well, it translates to minimum advertised pricing or MAP pricing of 180 for this knife. And I know you're thinking, man, that sounds like a lot for a plastic handle knife. Well, okay. Let's, let's do a little comparison shopping, shall we? Uh, let's go to the Benchmade stable, the old standby. In as similar materials as I can find, the 940-2, which has a black G10 handle, but S30V blade steel, which in my estimation would be an inferior steel to CPM D2. That knife is now up to 207 bucks minimum advertised pricing as i was uh as i was doing my price comparison research i stumbled upon something that is rather unbelievable right a, a 940-2 is 207 not pricing if you jump over to blade hq and you look up this knife the 940bk-2004 with the blade of cpm m4 it's 195 bucks. I digress. Uh, let's see what else. A 551 griptilian black Neural GTX handle and S30V blade. Those have crept up to 144. And then a competitive offering, the old Spyderco Paramilitary 2 with black G10 and S45 is now 171. Again. I don't think S45 is as good a knife steel as CPMD2. Just my personal opinion. So, given the fact that the tooling costs have not been depreciated to nothing like they have in the 940 and the Para 2, and this is brand new to the market, I don't think 180 is a bad price. Super solid execution, great mechanics. Rock solid lock mechanism, great blade steel, super attractive coating that should wear like cobalt, which is to say really well, right? Great looking blackened hardware, great clip design. And you know what I didn't look at? Yeah, I, I wanted to and I forgot. A lot of deep carry clips have hardware issues, but look at that. If you look through the gap between the clip and the handle, I have no screws protruding, causing me sort of a false stop when I get to the top of the clip. 
that the, the, that body screw, the assembly screw, is countersunk into the grivery, so that should be a non-issue. So really, really great clip design. Mm -hmm. I think they got a winner. Do I expect to see this in variations of handle material and blade finishes? I kind of do, especially if they sell well in the original form. So a very nice evolutionary knife, I think, from Benchmade and super well executed. There's you know, nothing revolutionary except kind of a surprise in blade steel. I'm really, really glad to see somebody dig through Crucible's archives and pluck out something that was way underappreciated when it was new. And I think as guys get this knife and start putting that CPM D2 to use, they're going to find that they agree with my appraisal of it. I think that's about it for this one. That, I think, could be a home run for Benchmade. So grace to you and peace, my friends. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas. Remember, the word is sharp. And if you're interested in the readout or any other knife from Knife Ship Free, please use the affiliate link in the description underneath this video to jump over to KSF and spend some Christmas money. That's all for this one. I'll talk to you guys soon.